For Creamer Media's Polity, I'm Shannon DeRayhove. I'm with Alon Reyes of Reyes Corp to discuss his new book, What to Do When You Want to Give Up. Many people see entrepreneurship as one of the key answers to South Africa's high unemployment and economic problems. Would you agree with this? And do you think South Africans have what it takes to be entrepreneurs? Yes and yes. So I think entrepreneurship is one of the uh, arrows in our quiver to, to solve our economic problems because entrepreneurs employ people. Um, and I do think South Africans have what it takes. Um, even though the GEM reports consistently shows us as having very low levels of uh, entrepreneurial activity, I think that um, those people that are entrepreneurial are extremely entrepreneurial and manage to build really wonderful businesses employing um, substantial numbers of people. So if you look at the international standard, on average an entrepreneur would employ 40 people in, in, in their life in their lifetime as an entrepreneur. How important is a book like this one in today's economically uncertain times? I think it's critical because when you look at the research around business failure, there's a, there's a number of statistics flying around. 96% of businesses will fail within a 10 year period. But when you look further into that uh, statistic, you'll see that Brad and Dunstreet did some research and found that 90% of businesses that fail, fail because the entrepreneur just gave up. In other words, only 10% of businesses that fail, fail because some third party forced them into closing their business down. That means there's a huge opportunity for those entrepreneurs that are thinking about giving up, not to give up. And I was particularly in that situation a couple of years ago where I wanted to give up. I got a, a meeting with somebody who gave me a completely different perspective around my business. And before lunch I wanted to give up, after lunch I didn't want to give up, I, per, I, I, I persisted and, um, and the business became a huge success. So sometimes one makes a decision that is emotional, where if you look at it very, very um, clinically, you can see it might not be the right decision to give up. Your book focuses on what budding entrepreneurs should do when their businesses are going badly and they feel like giving up. What is your advice in a nutshell? So, to, as I mentioned earlier, to make that decision based not on an emotional state of mind, but on some really uh, divisive questions that you have to ask yourself in that moment. One of them is, of course, do I have an economic right to exist? So does this business have an economic right to exist? Do I have a product that is differentiated? Do I have a market? that will want to buy that, that product and if, I buy, if they buy it, will I make a profit? Now often when you go into detail around those three areas, people don't have products but could have products. They just need to know how. They don't have real markets but could have markets and they don't make real profit. They think they're making profit but they could if they know how. So you can take a situation where you don't have an economic right to exist right now, but with a few tweaks you could have an economic right to exist. And I'm focusing very much on those people who are, are not succeeding because they haven't quite understood how to shift their business to have an economic right to exist. What is the most important advice that you would like to give to people who want to start their own businesses? Before you start, ensure that you have an economic right to exist. So first of all, before we even go there, do I have the commitment? Because everyone talks about passion in entrepreneurship, but the poor cousin of passion is commitment. And when you look at the st statistics, it's commitment that pushes you through, not just the passion. And people don't realize how hard it is to actually set up a sustainable business and how long it takes. That they have this thing called a business plan that generates a beautiful Excel spreadsheet and a beautiful, you know, 12 months and 12 months and this business is going to be flying. And yet, in reality, it doesn't happen, happen that way. And they get demotivated uh, and then make all sorts of emotional decisions. So, um, important to understand whether they have got the commitment. Second of all, do they have the economic right? to exist, which we've spoken about earlier. And thirdly, what other resources do they have available to them? Um, for example, uh, associ business associations, maybe uh, forums, um, family, you know, friends. If I look at my, my journey as an entrepreneur, in my darkest moments, I lent on my friends, not only for, for advice, but for money as well. 
um, I, I reached out to, to business associations to help me for, with input. And it's important when you're starting a business to understand what you have so that when you get to those really dark moments, you can reach out and know where to reach out to. Now on those dark moments, which business person inspires you most and who encourages you not to give up when things get difficult? I think there's two people. The, the first um, is, in, in, as I mentioned before, the, it, the, there was a time where it was the 20th of the month, I had 40 people in the business, I had no idea how I was going to pay salaries, no idea I was going to pay rent and I had maxed out, my investors wouldn't invest anymore, I'd maxed out all my overdraft on, on my different bank accounts and so I really I was, at, you know, to me at a dead end. And this man, his name is Stan, and I mention him in the book, phoned me up and said, come for lunch. And he asked me questions about the business and he got so palpably excited about what I was doing. And at the beginning of lunch, I wanted to give up. At the end of lunch, I didn't want to give up. And he was that, that guy. But I also have a mentor, um, you know, who was one of the people who d discovered in inverted commas, discovered me in my 20s and supported me through my journey. But if I had to talk about one person that really inspires me, it's not the big name items, it's somebody no one knows. It's a lady called Joy Malloy from Alexander Township, who in her early 20s, through very, very traumatic circumstances, landed up inheriting a plumbing business, which she knew nothing about. She, was, she, had, she had gone to America, she was a first time overseas, first time on airplane, etc. Her dream was to become a travel agent. Her father passed away and they called her to say come back to bury him. So she lost her, her father and then she lost her dream, you know, which was to become a, a travel agent. And at the airport at Arotama she met her with her, her mom, gave her a hug, her mom had a stroke in her arms and died in Arotama. So now she was, she'd lost her mother, father and her dream. She was now the head of the household, brother and sister, both in, in you know, school in, in Alex. And she had a big decision to make. And she had to, was she going to take over this business? She knew nothing about plumbing. And she decided that was what she was going to do. And fast forward the situation a couple of years later. She is a multimillionaire, lives in Bedford View. She drives a fancy SUV. But more importantly, she put her brother and sister through private school and her brother through Vitz. And she is my hero because here's somebody who comes from absolute abject poverty and has, through sheer determination, you know, become successful. And she's my hero. Finally, are entrepreneurs born or made? It's the wrong question. And I'll tell you why it's the wrong question. Because a couple of years ago, some research came out in the States which showed the most successful first-time entrepreneurs were 60 plus. In other words, you had the lowest rate of failure. In that echelon of entrepreneurs, you had the lowest rate of failure. So if you asked you know, uh, one of those people when they were 55 who'd been at IBM for 30 years and say, is this person an entrepreneur? They'd say, no, they're not an entrepreneur. Okay, yet five years later, they became part of this, this echelon of successful entrepreneurs. So the question, are they born or made, is the wrong question. I think five conditions need to be in place. And, and in, just to be brief, the first is in every situation, an opportunity or crisis must present. If you don't have an opportunity or crisis, it doesn't matter if you're born or made. You, know, you won't become an entrepreneur. Secondly, you have to have a tolerance for pain. Okay? Because there's huge amounts of rejection uh, as an entrepreneur and the un underlying sort of input there is self-esteem and that can shift in your lifetime. The third condition is a tolerance for risk and if you look at a 25 year old who you know is maybe just out of university, maybe a small car that is, is paid off, has got a very different risk profile to a 45 year old with two kids in a private school and a bond. So when the opportunity presents and, and maybe they've got a tolerance for pain, they might not have the tolerance for risk at that point. The fourth thing is, is the belief in your ability to muster resources. Not your ability to muster resources, but your belief in your ability to muster resources. So if you look at the Joy Malloy story, you will see that 
she wasn't a plumber, but she believed, given the crisis okay, that presented her father passing away, she believed she could get other plumbers to take advantage uh, of opportunities which she had seen to get work at, you know, uh, ran water, group five, etc. And she put that together. So her self-belief is once again the underpinning um, input there. And finally, your ability to learn and iterate. Because in the beginning of starting a business, you're getting constant feedback from the market. You're too expensive, you know, your quality is not at the right uh, level, your competitors are doing X and Y. If you're not reading that feedback, you, you will be part of the 96% you know, of businesses that fail. So those are the five conditions uh, that need to be pre present. You're not born, or you're not made, those are the conditions that need to be present.